All right, so we mentioned that the for loop is a test at the top because this test happens before this body of code runs each time. Today, we're also going to look at another loop that runs at the test at the top, and we're going to look mm -hmm. at a loop that runs test at the bottom. We're going to look at two versions of a loop called the while loop, and I'm going to get rid of all this here because this applies to for loops only. So the while loop is a test at the top, and then there's another one called the do while loop. And this is a test at the bottom. Let's look at the easier one, the while loop. And I'm going to create a while loop that also runs six times. So I'm going to go in i equals zero. And I'm going to say while i is less than five, system out print ln i. And I'm going to say plus plus i, like that. And so what I have done here in these lines of code is I've created the equivalent of a for loop, but I've used a while loop. So this loop, let me run it for you one time. And you can see this runs five times. And this is equivalent to, it's equivalent to this loop right here. And you might be thinking to yourself, why would I ever need this? when I can do this. But it turns out that the while loop is more flexible because we typically use the for loop when we know ahead of times how many times we want the loop to run. For example, here we know we want it to run five times. But sometimes you don't know ahead of time what you want, how many times you want the loop to run. For example, let's say you're asking the user to enter a number for you in the range of, say, 0 to 10. And they keep entering bad numbers. And you don't know how many times that's going to happen. So what you can do is you can use a while loop to keep going until they give you what they want. So while loops, this loop right here, is good if you don't know, if you don't know ahead of time how many times to run. Now, in this case, I'm sort of using it for something it's not intended for. I've made it equal to a for loop. But here, I can do some sort of test here. And um, let me give you a practical example. Uh, I'm going to ask the user to enter a number. So to do that, I'm going to use something called a scanner. This ties the scanner to the keyboard. I should mention that this trick I'm showing you with the scanner and the keyboard and entering information is not tested on the AP exam but is very often going to be used in your labs this year, so you still have to learn it. This is one of those rare things where you got to learn it, but it's not going to be on uh, your AP exam. Enter a number between 1 and 10 inclusive. I could use a print LN or a print. It doesn't really matter here. Uh, reply equals int. Uh, wait for user to enter a number, right? So I'm waiting for the user to enter a number. This is the one that makes it wait. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say system out print ln. You entered a, and then I'm going to type in the reply that they made. So um, let me run this for you one time. And you can see it's sitting here waiting for me to enter a number. And let's say I enter the number seven. So now it says you entered a seven. Now let's say that the user was naughty and did not do what you said. And you asked for a number between one and 10. Let's say they type in 11. Now, right now I'm not doing anything. I'm just terminating the program. But let's say I wanted to repeat the request until I got a number in the range that I wanted. So now what I can do is I can rewrite this as a while loop and ask basically the user over and over again to enter the number until they finally give me one in the right range. So to do that, I'm going to have some code that's going to be outside the loop. That's going to be that code right there. And then I'm going to have a while loop here. And I'm going to say while uh not valid input or something like oops sorry about that input 
and I'll create a, a Boolean flag here, valid input, and I'll set it to false because I don't really have a valid input yet, right? And I'm going to use this to figure out if the user has given me something that I can use, something that's in the range that's valid. I'm going to say while uh, user has not supplied a good number, we're going to keep going here. And it's going to say you entered this. And um, I'm going to say if, and this is where I do my error checking, I'm going to say if the reply is less than one or reply is greater than 10. And then what I'll do is I'll say you entered a bad number. Try again, right? And I don't need this part here. And now out here, if I get to here, that means that they've entered a good number. Uh, I'm going to have to move this reply here. I'm going to have to move this reply declaration outside. I'll show you in a minute why I need to do that. And this is the good response that I finally got. So what I'm doing is I'm setting up my scanner. I'm creating this flag to tell me when I've got a good piece of data and when I don't. Initially, I, I don't have a good piece of data. And this is I'm going to use this to store what the user enters. Now I've got this loop that's going to be going on, continuously asking the user, please enter a number between 1 and 10 inclusive. And when they enter it, I'm going to check it. This is my error checking to see if they did what I asked. And if they didn't do it, if it's too small or too big, I'm going to enter a number here. Now, I've forgotten one more thing here. I need to do something if they have entered a good number. Mr. Mason, can you guess, sir, what I do if uh, they entered a good number? I need to do something. I want to leave the loop. That's very good, sir. That's right. How do I do that? Sir, right now the loop runs as long as this variable is false. Okay, so I just need to set this variable to true. And allows me to leave the loop. All right, let's try this out now. This is a little bit of complicated uh, code here, but hopefully you figured out what's going on. So you can see it's sitting there asking me for a number. Now, if I type in a bad number like 100, you'll see that it tells me I entered in a bad number and it'll ask me again. But now you notice if I type in a good number, it just exits the program, it types the number and exits the program. So now notice that if I run this, if I keep typing in bad numbers, you see it just keeps going. And I don't know how many times that loop's going to run because I don't know how many times the user will misbehave. So the while loop is useful here instead of a for loop because I don't know ahead of time how many times I need it to run. So let's look at this loop a little bit more closely. And what we're going to do is we're going to keep doing this test over and over again. And each time the test comes out to be true, we're going to run the body of the loop. And then when we come back up here, we're going to test it again. So this while loop is also a test at the top loop. Because just like the for loop, this test is being done before I run the iteration before I run the iteration. Does everybody see that? OK. Now I'm going to show you the, the other kind of while loop, which is called a do while loop. And the main difference between the while loop and the do while loop is the do while loop is a test at the bottom loop. And what that means is that the do while loop always runs at least once. Notice that this while loop and the for loop may not run at all, depending if the test fails, you leave the loop right away. You don't even run once. But the do while loop, because it tests at the bottom of the iteration, it always runs at least once. Let's look at a do while loop. I'm going to use the do while loop to accomplish the same thing. And I'm going to put the do here like this. And I'm going to put the while here like this. And now I can make it a little bit simpler. I don't need this anymore. 
Okay, there is my do while loop, and you can see it says do this, and then it tests at the bottom. So now this is a test at the bottom loop. This is my do while loop. It tests at the bottom. So now I'm going to ask for the number again. I'm going to check to make sure if it's bad. I'm going to give them an error message. And I'm going to keep going while it's a bad condition. So let's run this again. And as long as it's a bad number, you can see it'll keep going. And I type in a good number. And you can see it will exit the loop. Now, I can tell you for certain that on the AP exam, the for loop and the while loop will be tested. I'm not completely sure if the do while is tested or not. I've never seen it. I've shown it to you. The do while is especially useful for things that have to run at least once, like user input is particularly good for because when you ask the user for input, you know they got to do it at least once, right? So that would be a good use for the do while loop.